breath. Um, and uh, Ben, 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 where do we begin? <laughs> uh, I guess I would start with that. But before you enlighten us, let me um, take the pleasure of introducing my friend and my colleague, uh, Aaron McClear, who is the U.S. Chair of Public Affairs for Edelman. And uh, he and I have been glued at the hip throughout this entire process. And um, I quite frankly wanted you all to meet him and experience him um, in his council, the way he's been providing it internally and externally. So um, uh, Aaron, thank you for spending you. the morning with us. And um, all right, Ben, tell us something. What's going on? Well, I, I think we're on the cusp of, of uh, having Joe Biden become the president of the United States. There are four states still outstanding. All of them are breathtakingly close, but uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. Results are going to keep coming in over the day and the weekend. Uh, Joe Biden has a lead in all four of them overnight. He uh, took the lead in Pennsylvania and Georgia. Uh, Nevada is very, very slow to count its votes, maybe the slowest state in the country. Uh, and it may take the weekend to get those. Arizona has tightened a little bit in favor of the of the president, uh, but it looks like Joe Biden is going to have sufficient votes uh, to win the electoral college, probably with under 300 electoral votes. Now, uh, the natural question people have next is, what is the aftermath? Are there are there cases that the president can bring? And the answer is, is that as of right now, and these totals are going to change, but as of right now, the president is within the statutory uh, recount provisions of all four of those states. So Pennsylvania, it's within 0.5% of the total vote, for those of you keeping track at home over the, uh, over the course of, uh, of the day. Uh, Georgia is also 0.5%. Should come back to Georgia in a second because it, mm -hmm. it shows the political gods do have a sense of humor. Uh, and Arizona has a 0.1 percent, so that will be on the, the cusp of whether, uh, <coughs> excuse me, there can be a, a recount. And Nevada has no threshold, so it is easy to ask for. It. Um, any candidate has the right to pursue recounts under state laws if they're within the margins. Remember that Jill Stein, the third party candidate in 2016, pursued recounts in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan. Uh, and the Hillary Clinton campaign intervened in those recounts in late November. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is traditional and appropriate to pursue those sorts of, of actions. Should also have mentioned Wisconsin, where the president has already filed for a recount. That's a margin of 20,000 votes. He won Wisconsin four years ago with 22,000 votes, so um, he was not he was not pleased when Jill Stein asked for a recount with that margin. But you know, we may be we may be going there as well. <clears throat> so Georgia is the particular one uh, again with the gods, political gods having a sense of humor. Um, Georgia is within the margin as of right now, where where a recount is perfectly appropriate to request. Georgia is a unique state. It's got 159 counties, the second highest number. That means that if you do a recount, you got to go to a lot of different uh, locations to do it. It takes a long time. Georgia also has a runoff election system mm -hmm. for every other race, and there will be two, count them two, United States Senate uh, runoff contests uh, on January 5th, so that in the midst of doing a potential presidential recount, there will also be uh, the, the possibility of those Georgia Senate um, uh, runoffs. So if you know anyone who's a Georgia election official, uh, you should send them an extra bottle of something uh, at this point. But that's where we are today. Joe Biden's on the cusp. Let me, let me ask you this, and Aaron, I know based on some of our earlier conversations, you have some questions um, in terms of like what we say to our our clients right now, but this has been the longest week known to man. And I think many of us were thinking that, okay, finally, and you and I said, even possibly by noon today, that we may know something. But based on what you said, this isn't close to being over, even once it's declared because of the um, 
uh, because it will be contested that we still have a long ways out. Is that fair, just for us to sort of manage our expectations for what's in front of us? Is, uh, you know, ben, I don't know if that's a question for Ben, but ben, I, you know, I think that that's... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Ben, <laughs> you, you expect... No, that's fine. So, so the, um, uh, you know, given that we have certainly a, we, we, we have the vote count that's going to be complete soon. Uh, after that, there could be recounts, could be automatic recounts, as you said, in three of these states. Uh, and as the president said yesterday, uh, beyond the recount scenario, uh, he's filing lawsuits uh, right. and, and, and it seems like he will continue to. So I, I think what we're, uh, we're getting at is, um, uh, can you crystal ball this thing for us? Um, when are we going to have some sort of sense of, uh, of completion here? Well, I think you're going to have a sense of who actually won pretty soon, but the legal process is going to is going to take a while. I mean, again, yeah. it was sort of Thanksgiving time four years ago before the Clinton folks uh, um, accepted the results. The electoral uh, college safe harbor date is December eighth. Uh, the slates of delegates meet in the state capitals on December sixteenth. The U.S. House opens the envelopes from the states on January 6th, and the president's term ends uh, one way or another on January 20th at, at noon. So I think you're going to see a number of legal actions. I think one thing that um, that is noteworthy about the election is that the, the Trump folks talked about their 50,000-person poll watcher army. Yes. In every polling place that they wanted to. And the actual instances of fraud or irregularities, uh, at least so far, has been rhetorical and not factual. And to make the case, you have to go precinct by precinct to, to really show how there was fraud. There is certainly not enough ballots at issue at the moment. Uh, to throw the election results in jeopardy, which is the legal standard for this. So I think, I think you should expect a month of, of legal noise. Uh, and uh, by early December, I suspect the, the inevitable is the case. The president does have one uh, lo really long shot uh, strategy that they may be aiming for that you should watch out. Uh, about in your individual states. And that is if you can toss up enough dust about the election results. Uh, what they may try and do is to enjoin the, uh, the secretaries of state from certifying the results. So, excuse me a sec. And as, as Ben, as Ben. I gotta, knows. I'm sorry, I gotta run. Yeah, we were afraid this nope, was gonna happen. Yeah. I hope it's good news that we're getting court. Close to some closure. No Thank problem. you, Ben. Thanks for being with you. Sorry to run. Thank you. We'll see you on CNN. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Lisa, before we split, just one, you know, one thing to pick up on what he was saying. I, I think that, you know, as you were asking, this is going to take a while until we have some certainty. Um, and what we've been advising clients really is that, um, you know, during this uncertain period, um, uh, preach patience, uh, preach respect for, for opposing points of view, uh, have faith in the in the process. Well, you know, the process is not just, you know, counting the votes, uh, which we think will be complete within, you know, 24, 48 hours in these states, uh, but it also is uh, these automatic recounts that Ben spoke of. So if these are close enough in these states within a half of a, of a percentage point, uh, these states have statutes to say we need to do a recount. That's part of the process. Um, uh, le legitimate objections uh, to the process uh, legally are also, you know, part of the democratic process. So, um, you know, I, I think that what we should remember is that when the media calls this thing in the next couple of days, that doesn't necessarily mean that the this this interme intermediary period uh, is over. There could be recounts. Uh, there will be lawsuits. At some point, uh, it's going to be clear who the winner is. At some point, it will be clear whether or not these lawsuits uh, are real, whether they're, they they're, they have any teeth. Uh, and at that point, I think we we, we pivot to uh, a real contested election. We're out of the long count process, and now we're into a, a real contested election period. And I, I think that was exactly the question I was asking. So thank you, because this is disruptive. This week has been disruptive. And I think for our clients and for our colleagues, the question is, how long are we going to have to continue in this disruptive stage? And what do we do to maintain business continuity, productivity, et cetera? And so, I mean, I think Ben getting up and leaving, um, I think 
many of us were like, okay, are we here? And you know, he said to you and I 20 minutes ago, I think we're going to know by noon. And so there's a, there's a level of anxiety that's reduced. And then I think the question for all of us is, and then does it come back up and are we going to have to manage this according to what you said until 1st of December? And how do you manage that? I, I think that's right. I think what we've seen some CEOs say so far is, you know, we need to focus on what we can control. Okay, we're going to respect the process. The process right. is going to take longer than we would like to play out. Um, but we, we need to just control what we can. We need to be patient, respect one another, uh, but get back to business. And that's the, you know, the advice we've been giving to brands right now is it's okay to get back to normal. You know, you need to be sensitive to the landscape, sensitive to what's happening out there. Uh, always lead with empathy with your own employees. Um, but we have to get back to business because this process is not going to be over this weekend. This is going to be, you know, perhaps a longer process. Uh, and, and, and brands are, I think, are, are, are smartly navigating through that at the moment. And business for sure, but with such a high level of sensitivity that anything that you could say, that you might say or do at this time could be interpreted. And right. you and I have been dealing with a few clients, you know, in the past 48 hours who literally thought they were saying something innocuous, but be given the time, it has exploded. And so absolutely business as usual, but I don't think we could stress enough the importance of knowing that anything that you say right now could be interpreted um, in favor or um, in opposition to one of the candidates or whoever the declared winner is. No matter who wins, we are still in a, in a divided deeply divided, hyper-partisan country, uh, very, very intense right now, not just with the election, with everything else we've been dealing with this right. year. And so having sensitivity, look, get back to business, get back to doing your job. But as it relates to talking about the election, as it relates to business as usual that might be drawn into the election and politics, everybody needs to be super sensitive, have a lot of empathy for your employees, uh, and recognize the moment that we're in uh, and, and not be the company uh, that steps in it, you know, by, yeah. by, by not being sensitive to what's happening. So yeah. look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a couple of months, I think, of, uh, of sort of that period of time where we need to be sensitive, we need to be cautious. Um, and, uh, you know, as this plays out, we're, we're, you know, we're glad we have the advice of, of Ben. We're glad that we have, we have counsel from people like you. And, and we're glad that so many of uh, you know, the, the clients we've been dealing with uh, have been preparing for all these possible scenarios. So they're not caught flat footed as, as this plays out over the next few weeks. Yeah. And I think that the last point on this and um, what we have seen as of late is the role of business has to be a bomb. You know, my, my, one of my favorite songs is a bomb in Gilead and it's literally the role of business now is to soothe and to reduce anxiety and to give people a sense of confidence that we will emerge from this and hopefully better because government is too fractured to do it. Um, there is yeah. no little trust in the media uh, to play that role. And I think there's great respect for nonprofits, but do they have the capacity to do that? And so who is it left to? Business. But business has to be the bomb. That's right. And B-A-L-M, not B-A-O-M-B, which is an important yeah. distinction between those two things. Uh, last thing I'll say is you're exactly right. And, and one thing as we move forward, as we saw in our report last week, there was a bit more appetite for business to engage in a contested scenario than a delayed vote count. So as we move yeah. through here, as that settles into, into you know, what we expect will be a contested election at some point soon, um, you know, there is more of an appetite for business to be that bomb, uh, to, to serve that role and to, and to really step up. Uh, and try to bring us together to get us through this very difficult time. All right. All right. Um, I know what you and I are going to go do next. Um, check this thing out, see what's happening. And um, thank you so much for joining and thank you for ev everything you've been doing internally and externally. It is greatly valued and making a really big difference. And so onward. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, listeners. And um, we'll talk.